In this example, we will be explaining how to use the report wizard. So the purpose of the report wizard is to be able to output different diagrams and information from your model into a Word or PowerPoint or Excel, any sort of output so that it can be sent via email and people without Cameo can read the report. So to create these reports, you would hit tools and then report wizard and then it comes up with this first page. And we have a bunch of templates which are available to you out of the box. Um, so I would suggest using the templates that come out of the box before trying to create your own. So if we just look at some of these options, um, we have Word documents here and we'll go ahead and, and try the activity diagram Word document. And so what we're doing here is we're selecting which template we're trying to output. And so if we wanted to create a new template, we would go to new here and we could put it in any of these uh, locations. So we've selected the activity diagram, which template we're wanting to use. We can also uh, open this, this template and it will show you the VTL velocity template language, which is going on to create the actual output. So going back to the report wizard template, we click activity diagram, click next. And on this page, we're going to talk about the author publisher, all the global variables. So in most cases, I would just click next and not worry about it, but I'll go ahead and show you guys. You click variable right here, and then you can modify the name of the author or the revision or whatever else. You can change these variables so that when you run the um, report it will show different global variables but for now we'll leave author as just author and we'll see that later so click OK and then click next and now we would scope our project to what what um, examples we would want to look at so if we wanted everything we could just scope it to the entire model if we wanted just a certain aspect of the model um, make this a little bigger Let's say we only wanted to uh, take the activity diagrams from these packages right here. So I'm scoping it down so I won't actually get these down here. Any activity diagrams down here will not be shown in the output report. So then I'll click next. Now we have to determine where you want to output the report. So you can just hit those three dots. I've already got it preset to a location. Um, and, and this is the name of the, the document which is going to be generated, activity output. So I strongly recommend whatever you want to call it, having this underscore output at the end, as it will help you understand that it is the output versus a template. This is just what type of um, image you would want to output. You can basically change the image type as you please. I'm just gonna leave it as a JPEG, basically, if you have problems, just go ahead and change it, but I haven't really had many problems with this. The auto size, this is where I've had some problems um, because some of the images that, or the diagrams that you create, when they're converted into images, they don't fit properly on a sheet of paper or a Word document. So I try to hit this uh, fit image to paper, um, but sometimes it makes sense to rotate it or, or whatever and sometimes you can force it to not resize if that's what you intend. But I'm going to fit to paper. This display empty value as box is explaining what the output will be when you don't have an output. And what that means is if there's no output in Cameo, like if the value property has no set default value, then what does the report export? Does it just have nothing there? So it would say like speed of type miles per hour equals, and then would you just have a space there? Would you have nothing there? Would you have NA there not available? So you can change this custom text to whatever you want, or you can just leave it as empty. So I'll just leave it as empty. And uh, this publish to server, we're not going to do that. And uh, display and viewer after generating report, you can check this so that it will pop up right when you click generate. So we'll go ahead and click generate. And it popped up for us. 
and uh, our global variables that we click through, it just has author revision 0.2. So this is kind of like the, the default, I guess, or whatever was set before. We didn't really worry about that, but uh, it has the name of the project, SysML examples that you see at the top left of this entire screen. And uh, then we can scroll down and we can see information about some of our activities. So we have the, the picture of the diagram that's fit to the screen. We've got the outgoing initial from the initial node. It goes to the accept event action. So it has this special little icon, explains what it is. So it's it's pretty nice to nice template. Um, and you can see that it worked as intended. It goes through and just iterates through all of the different activities in the scope. And uh, you see that we have about 19 pages of this. So it's just iterating through all of the activity diagrams. So what I can do also is repeat this entire thing, sub tools, report wizard, and I can just kind of next my way through, next, next. And this time, instead of just having this, so remember we had 19 pages, I'm just gonna scope it to the entire model now. So it'll be larger. And I'm going to click generate, which will overwrite our original one. So output file already exists. Would you like to replace it? Yes. And so now we're gonna have more than 19 pages because the scope is larger. So now we have 48 pages of activity diagrams and you can see it's, it looks similar, but it has additional um, has additional diagrams because our scope was larger. So the next thing to do is play with the different templates and start learning about them. So you can go to the report wizard and then activity diagram and then open that up. We did this before and you can start realizing how the code works. So I like to use the templates to help me write more templates because they're very good examples of um, good output reports. So we've got a table of figures. It will show you how to iterate or loop. It will like show you how to make a macro. Another way that is very helpful to learn how to use VTL is to, there is a report wizard, which I will pull up now. This is the Magic Draw Report Wizard template creation tutorial. And this is a 31 page document. So it's, and you can just Google it to find it. And um, it, it will tell you the basic stuff about, you know, logic and setting variables and hello world and creating tables within Word. So this is a pretty helpful resource to start with which you can also use some of the code from here to start creating your VTL. So what you can also do is you can create a new template. So you just click new and then write the name of the template and write a description and then figure out where it would be saved. And you can go to that file directory. And the document that we selected was a text file, so that's why you have the text icon there. And now you can use this new template to create a report. So let's look at one more type of report template, the behavior report. And we can open that to another one out of the box. And we can see it looks fairly similar to the one we looked at before, but it has this um, level right here. So it's, it's basically changing the amount of indent that, that you have and so we're actually going to take some of that code and utilize it in our script that we're making so this new template word is the template that we're working on i went ahead and changed it from a text file to a word file because it's much easier to troubleshoot in word than excel or powerpoint um, you'll notice that i've i've kind of taken some of this the code from other um, templates and just copy pasted them. I have been using the number counter, which you can get by going to the layout tab on Word and then going to line numbers and then clicking continuous.
So normally it's just like none, and then you just go to continuous. So now when you're troubleshooting, it will tell you there's an error on line 15, and then you know where to go look for that error. Um, additionally, something I use a lot while I'm troubleshooting is I will highlight things using the text highlight color so that um, it flags it for myself to, to know if the code is working or not working. I also use it to help me know where the, the end of certain um, loops are. So at the end of this macro, which is in yellow, is, is going to be down here at this end. Uh, so, so it helps you because if there's not like a smart reader like MATLAB or Python where it indents it for you, you're, you're kind of on your own and it's, it's kind of difficult um, to know where everything is. So another thing that becomes a problem is the spaces. Notice that everything is just like jumbled together. I didn't, I don't have like multiple enters or returns between the end of this macro to the next, um, next line of code. The reason is, is because these enters or returns will actually um, create space in the report output. So I have to actually remove those and have everything in one giant chunk. So it's not easy to read, but that's what the output would look like when you're all said and done. So while I'm troubleshooting, I would likely have these enters to kind of let myself work on, you know, one macro at a time. And, you know, after I've tested it, made sure everything looks good, um, I would remove the returns there. Additionally, we see a table that uh, is automatically created, and this this um, table stuff is has been taken from other um, templates. And to talk about kind of the indentation, we've got that down here, where we say our we have the if else statements. So like if level, which is our variable, equals six, which is indented really really far then set diagram elements equals element saved five so if i were to find that i can control f and see where that is and element saved five so it would indent this amount so that's that's kind of what's going on there i'm not going to go through the entire script here in detail um i i just wanted to to note several things which is like the the numbering here which is really helpful for troubleshooting you can color your your um text as well as add the uh, highlights that's really helpful for for knowing what you have added to your word document or report output because sometimes it's a little bit unclear um, and then the profiling get element properties this right here is a really good way to help you troubleshoot so the the double hashtag or double pound sign means that it's going to be a comment for everything after that. So if I were to just like remove the, the, the double pound sign, then it would give me a list of all of the um, whatever I'm trying to get the element properties of. So this will allow you to know how to code. So the profiling dot get element properties, and then you put whatever you are trying to get more information about inside of the parentheses with the dollar sign, and it will it will help you out uh, immensely. So with that, I, I think that uh, we'll call it done for this video. I hope that uh, this helped. I'll try and do a video that goes through this in detail, because uh, I, I realize it's a lot to absorb all at once. Thanks.